Okay, so we are looking at land space planning. And it is known as we discussed in the last class by various names partial order planning, lease commitment planning. And the difference between land space planning and state space planning is that land space planning searches in the space of all possible plans. And a plan is represented as a four tuple where the first one is actions or they could be operators with variables inside them, then ordering links, then causal links and then binding constraints. So, a plan is basically made up of these four tuples and we have observed that phi 0 is always made up of two actions A 0 and A infinity and it has one ordering link which says that A 0 happens before A infinity. It has no binding constraints and no causal links and that is always the starting position for search in plan space planning, where A 0 if you remember is an action whose preconditions are nil and post conditions are, are the start state, whatever the predicates in the start state are everything is a effect of the A 0 action. And A infinity is an action which consumes the goal predicates and has no effect. So, the starting node in the search space is this pair of two actions and the ordering constraint between them. So, let us first write down the algorithm and then we will discuss what those constituents are. So, the high level algorithm for plan space planning. So, it begins with phi 0 which is a initial plan and we will use uh, uh, phi to stand for plans in general. So, we initialize phi to phi 0 and then while we, we discuss flaws, but we will we'll repeat them again in a moment. So, the basic strategy in plan space planning is to inspect the plan for flaws and try to resolve those flaws one by one essentially. And we are using here what we will call as a non deterministic operator which will choose some flaw from the set of flaws that the plan has. We will define flaws again in a moment and it looks for resolvers. So, we will assume that we have a mechanism for finding out what are the resolvers for those flaws. There may be more than one and then again we say choose okay. if uh, 
if if the set of resolvers is empty then you cannot find a plan else choose a resolver r belonging to this set again we assume that non deterministically will make the right choice which is why at this stage we can return empty in practice of course i am sure you are now conversant with this idea that whenever we talk about non determinism in algorithms like this it basically implies at the background that in a deterministic algorithm there is search happening essentially so you would try one flaw from this set try to resolve it and then if it if you reach a dead end you will backtrack and try the next flaw and resolve it likewise you would choose one resolver to use a flaw and and carry forward and if you reach a dead end you would backtrack and try the next resolver so essentially inherently there is a search embedded behind this non deterministic choose operators which we are now familiar with but here we will assume that somehow we are choosing the correct flaw so this algorithm is non deterministic in nature then let's say pi prime or pi gets let's say we have an operator called apply which chooses applies operator to pi essentially so this so here we are looking for the set of resolvers for the flaw then we are picking one resolver and applying that to pi which means it will do something to the plan remove that flaw in some way and then update the plan essentially and we'll keep doing that as long as the plan has a flaw essentially the only place we will exit with failure so after we exit from this of course we just say return pi but the other place to exit is when we cannot find a resolver for a flaw which means we have explored all possible resolvers and we still can't find one essentially mm -hmm. and then we had discussed that there are two kinds of flaws one is open goal and the other is a uh, threat so let's discuss this uh, suspens anomaly that we had seen earlier remember that we had shown that uh, algorithm like goal stack planning which does linear planning in the sense that it breaks up the goals one by one tries to solve the first goal and then tries to solve the second goal and we had shown that with a problem like this with a goal like on ab and on bc if this is a goal set which in our system would be represented by a infinity having two goals i just use short forms on bc it produces nothing so if you remember this was a suspense anomaly the start the goal state was that a is on b and b is on c and the starting state was that c is on a and b is on the table and a is on the table which again you will recall you can represent by a0 with no inputs and everything that is here which is let us say arm empty remember we are having dealing with a one arm robot on table this so this stands for on table b clear b on table a on c a clear a that's a start action and that's a end action and that's the suspense anomaly problem where we we have a very simple problem of three blocks and what we saw earlier was that if you try to say that of those two goals that i have on ab and on bc i will try to solve them one by one that first i will completely solve on ab 
then I will completely solve all on VC or in the other order that you cannot do it essentially. When you do the second goal, it invariably disrupts the first goal that you had achieved earlier. So, these goals are what we said was non serializable and what we want to see is that plan space planning offers the possibility of solving such problems and finding optimal solutions. So, if you work out the solution in your mind for this problem where this is a start state and that is a goal state, the optimal solution is a six step solution where you first unstack C from A, put it on the table, then put B on to C, that is two more actions, then put A on to C, that is two more actions. Goal stack planning would never find this six step plan and plan space planning can find this plan, so that is why we are interested in that. Now, there are two kinds of flaws as we said in a plan, one is open sub goals or open goals we will use the two terms interchangeably and the other is the threat. So, as of now this partial plan which has only two actions A0 and infinity has two flaws and they are those two open goals which says that there is nothing supplying this predicate. What we need is some action which will supply this predicate or in other words every open goal must have a supporting causal link which means we must have some action here which produces this predicate which is consumed by this action. So, threats, so, so let us recall what we looked at, looked at threats. So, let us say that at some point we want to do pick up, let us say pick up m, m is a block. So, I am, I am drawing this from top to down as is often the practice in many books, A infinity is somewhere here and we have an ordering link from top to down which I will not draw because we have only a few actions to discuss here. And then some, somewhere we had an action let us say stack n on to y. So, I will use this question mark to distinguish constants from variables as is also often the practice. So, n is a constant which means the block name is n and this question mark y means it is a variable. So, we do not know which block you are going to stack n onto. So, some for some reason you have got this action here and this hap this is ordering and this is ordering. And let us say one of the preconditions for this is clear m. Of course, there are other preconditions if you remember the strips action that r must be empty and m must be on the table and one of them is clear m. So, let us just let us say this is an open sub goal that is the flaw that we are addressing. So, how do you how do you address or how do you resolve this open goal flaw? There are two possibilities, one is that an existing action in the plan can supply the predicate which means there is already an action somewhere and you can just establish a causal link from that action to this action provided it, it is consistent and by this we mean that the ordering links are consistent by, and by that we mean that there are no cycles in that essentially. The other option, the other way of resolving an open goal is to add a new action. So, for example, in this situation there is no action which can supply on A, B or on B, C. So, we are compelled to add a new action. So, for example, we might say uh, stack A B as an action and this provides this causal link to on A B. That is the second way of resolving an open goal which is to add a new action to the plan. How do we add an action to the plan? We add the action to this set of actions, then we add a causal link from this new action to the predicate that we are trying to support and we insert an ordering link here and if there are any constraints then we insert them. For example, you might want to say add stack x, y and x equal to a and y is equal to b, but we will skip that part here. Likewise, you could say this is achieved by stack b, c. Now, because of the fact that one of the things we are doing in plan space planning is to resolve open goals, it still has a flavor of backward reasoning. 
because open goals are only in the goal state and, and then you keep building. But it is quite possible that you may end up first satisfying some open goals then jump here. So, there is no fixed order of search. The other interesting thing about plan space planning which we had observed was that in state space planning both the selection of the action and positioning of the action was done simultaneously in one move. So, for example, for our state space we would say this is the next action. So, which means it has selected the action and also said that its position is the next in the plan because the plan is a linear sequence of actions. Likewise, in backward state space search you start constructing the plan from the end steps. In plan space planning we have selected these actions stack A on B and stack B on C, but we have not said anything about what is if any the relating ordering between them. So, we separate the task of selecting an action and imposing an ordering on the actions. So, that is done independently. So, in principle of course, this allows us to first select some action in between. For example, if there was something which was very critical to the plan and we knew it was critical, then we could select it in between. And we had used this example of going from place A to place B. So, if I had to go from here to Dehradun for example, I would say I need to fly to Delhi first and I would put that action in between. So, plan space planning allows you to do that, but this kind of reasoning which is more abstract requires still more structure in the plan and the structure is typically hierarchical in nature. So, you have to talk of high level actions and then refine them into low level actions which we are not going to consider here. So, we are working at the at the action level which is at the at one flat level here essentially which is why this has a flavor of backward search to some extent. So, we have this clear m here and let us say to make clear m we say unstack something let us say we do not even know what that is some x from m and that will produce this. So, I will use this dotted line to represent the causal link which means this is producing this and this is consuming this essentially. So, this must of course, happen before this. So, the moment I insert this action into my plan. So, what did I do? I inserted this was already there in my plan these four actions the two start actions and the these two actions that were there in the plan and then I have added this action unstack something from m and I did that because I wanted to resolve this goal of clear m. But the moment I have this plan structure it has a flaw which is of the type threat essentially and what is the threat? The threat is that here I have a causal link. So, basically a threat is to a causal link always that something is trying to disrupt the causal link. What is the causal link doing? Causal link says this action is producing clear m which is consumed by this pickup m action. So, I have established a causal link in my plan. Now, because there are variables involved here because the fact that we do not know what is the ordering of these three actions of course, we know this must come before this, but we do not know anything about how this is placed with respect to these two. There is a potential threat. What is the potential threat? That this action will come in between these two actions and this y will bind to m which would mean that for pick up m I, I need it clear m to be true, but if this stack n onto m happens before that which means it happens between these two actions. So, let us say this is a thread that I am considering that this happens first, this happens next and this happens third. So, this action happens after this action and before this action and there is a possibility that this y can be made equal to m or bound to m. Then you can see that it is destroying this causal link because for pick up m you needed clear m, but by putting n onto m that clear m has been lost. So, this action is a threat to this causal link. So, as we I think discussed in the last class an action is a threat and when you say threat it is always a potential threat. 
to a causal link if it can produce so what can it produce it can produce not clear y as an effect so effects are below and the preconditions are on the top it can produce an effect let's just call it not p which can be unified with a condition p needed by this action which means it's going to dis destroy that condition if it can so if that in other words if y can be unified with m and when we say unified we mean y equal to m is possible and this action happens after this action and this action happens before this action so if these three conditions were to become true that that y equal to m and there is an ordering link ordering link between this and this and an ordering link between this and this then the threat would materialize and my plan would no longer be a valid plan because this would no this would become an open goal which would no longer be satisfied because the causal link was satisfying this but inserting this action in between destroys that causal link so threat is a other kind of flaw in a plan one one of, one is a simpler kind that open goal has no support the other kind is that there is a threat to this thing how do we resolve a threat so there are three ways to resolve a threat one is called separation which in this example so basically it says add a binding constraint and make sure that this cannot unify with this which means add this to my set of binding constraints basically once i do that then i know that i am not going to stack this n onto m i will stack it onto something else which means m is free for this whatever that x is to be stacked onto that that's one way of resolving a threat another way is to demote is called demotion so let us say in general terms let us say action a is a threat to a link call a1 some predicate p in action a2 so this is a1 this is a2 and this is action a one way is to say that p is different which is separation the other one is demotion which says that let action a happen after this pick up m happens which means add the link a2 happening before a okay so when i say add i add it to the relevant place when i'm adding a ordering link i must add it to this set when i'm adding a binding constraint i must add it to that set and so on so i can push this action down and so we say it has been demoted it happens later in life that will also resolve the threat because then nothing is disrupting this clear aim because the, all this happens somewhere later in life and the third is as you can imagine promotion which is you add a1 to happen before a again to the set of ordering links hmm. so we have basically five resolvers for open goal we have two resolvers old i'll just say old action by this i mean an existing action so maybe let's just write existing action or a new action to resolve an open goal either find some existing action which can supply the predicate or if you cannot then add a new action because taking an old action existing action may actually violate the constraints that there should be no cycles in the actions so this is for the open goal and this is for the threat essentially and the algorithm essentially goes through this cycle of choosing a flaw our initial plan has two flaws those two open goals choosing a resolver so for both those flaws we have chosen two resolvers which is to add the new action 
and you keep doing that till there are no more flaws left in the actual. So, this is a let us say this is a flaw an underlined one and okay, if I circle it then it is been resolved, but of course, these actions have their own requirements. So, stack B C requires holding B, it requires clear C, it requires um, on no, no that is all and it produces apart from on B C, it produces arm empty and it produces uh, clear B. So, let us assume this clear B is an effect of stacking B onto C, which means when we unstack something from well, if you were to unstack B from something then B would be no longer clear. So, when you are holding it, it B is not clear, only when you put it down it is clear essentially. Likewise, this needs clear B holding A and it produces arm empty and it produces clear A. So, everything here is an open goal. Every time we add a new action, all its preconditions are open goals essentially. So, then we look for a flaw and resolve it essentially. So, let us say we look for this flaw clear B and we say this action is producing clear B. So, I have an existing action which is supplying clear B. So, I add an ordering link which so I say that that this action or this clear B is consumed by this. So, I have an ordering link it says actually the link is between the actions that this action must happen. So, first I must stack B on C which will produce this clear B and then I will consume clear B when I stack A on to B. So, A B C. So, you can see that is log logical in some sense that you know you can see that you must first stack B onto C and then A onto B and at least it is doing this part correctly. Essentially. So, now let us address this one, it, this needs an action. So, an action that we can find is unstack no, no, one minute. holding A. So, action that you can find is pick up. A and the action for this also we can find is so this we have taken care of pick up B. Let us say we are doing this in this order. So, pick up B will also produce other things like not arm empty uh, in the sense that it will delete arm empty, it needs arm empty as a predicate. Likewise, this needs arm empty as a predicate and it produces not arm empty. It needs on table A, this needs on table B. So, let us write it here on table B, on table A, it needs clear A, needs clear B. Observe that we have an open goal clear B here, which could have been supplied by that action stack B onto C, but we cannot choose that because then we would have to say that that happens before this, and we already said that this happens before that. So, so something which is kind of goes with this is that the moment you add a causal link, this is a causal link we have added. Pick up B produces holding B, which is consumed by stack B onto C. The moment we add this link, we also add an ordering link essentially. 
So, once you added an ordering link in this direction, we cannot add an ordering link in this direction here. So, we cannot choose this that for this essentially. So, let us say that uh, we choose this as the next open goal and we say unstack something x from a and that will make it clear. So, this will, be, this will be become an effect of this action and it will also produce holding x and other things and unstack x on a needs x to be on a. So, we can produce it like this that this start action has an effect called on C a and we can say if we say that x equal to C then we can establish this causal link here. So, this is taken care of that which I have not drawn here the, the precondition for this is on C a which is taken care of because it is being produced by a 0. Another precondition is arm empty which is also produced by this and the third precondition is clear C uh, which must be there. So, somebody should have pointed this out this was clear C and that is the opposite. So, the three conditions needed for unstacking C from A which is clear C is true in the initial state on C A is true in the initial state and arm empty is true in the initial state and they are produced by this. So, we establish these three causal links which will do that essentially. Now, you can see that if you look at this causal link here that A 0 is producing arm empty which is being consumed by unstack C from A is being threatened by this action here pick up B. Because if pick up B we have not said when pick up B is happening with respect to at least all we have said is that A 0 happens then this unstack C from A happens then pick up A happens. Notice also that this cannot happen immediately afterwards so once we unstack C from A we are holding C and uh, it would produce something called not arm empty and holding C. So, which means we obviously cannot do unstack C from A followed by pick up A because pick up A also needs arm to be empty, but our planner has only said that this must happen before that and nothing else. We have not said that no action can be inserted in between and as we will see that can be done essentially. So, the only thing we have said is one line is that you unstack C from A and then at some point you pick up A and stack it onto B. But before you stack it onto B, sometime you must stack B onto C, and before you stack B onto C, you must pick up B essentially. So, that is all we have so far. But now we have a threat, this is being this is threatening this, this is threatening to disturb this causal link here. So, we have these three options available separation, separation is not possible because there are no variables here. Promotion is not possible because A 0 is the first action, it is always the first action and nothing can happen before A 0. The only thing remains is demotion which means we say that this must happen after this which means we in, in introduce a causal uh, an ordering link between this and that. Then let us say that uh, okay. So let, let us say that we 
address one of these issues. Hmm. Okay, let us say we are looking at this arm empty. and we have pushed it beyond this. So, we cannot connect it to the starting action. So, we must produce some action called pick up uh, or put down something. This put down by will need holding by and this open goal can be met by this goal holding C by saying y equal to c. So, what are the actions we have so far? We have got this action unstack c from a, pick up a, put down. So, this will become c here, put down c somewhere. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have got all the 6 actions that we need and I will sort of leave this as a small exercise for you to see that now you can resolve all the flaws in this by either introducing an ordering constraint to remove a threat or connecting. So, for example, we can connect this to this which means this must happen after that. So, the first action that we can see is unstack. C from A and sometime after that you must have pick up A and sometime after that you must have put down C. We do not know, we just know that this, this happens after that. Then we know that after put down C we must have pick up B somewhere and after pick up B we have stack B C. And sometime after stack BC, we have stack AB. Of course, it is not yet a proper plan because, as you can see, you cannot do these two actions stack BC and stack AB immediately afterwards. It, it needs a precondition which is destroyed by this, which is obviously not, which needs that it should be holding A. So, you can see that this needs holding A. and that is provided by this. So, this is a precondition and somehow you have to figure out that the sequence of actions is that you uh, unstack C from A, then you put down C, then you pick up B, stack B onto C and then this link has to be added. That this pick up A must happen after stack B C. So, why it happens I will leave it as a small exercise for you because it happens because some, some flaw has to be resolved and the flaw could be for example, that arm empty or something like that is needed for pick up A and stack B onto C is producing arm empty. So, maybe that will drive this accuracy. So, in the end we will have one order go from here to here, from here to here sorry go from here to here then go from here to here. And we expect a linear plan in this particular example because of the fact that we are dealing with a one armed robot. And it can do only one thing at a time as opposed to other kind of domains. For example, this shoe tying domain that we discussed earlier where you have to wear left sock, wear life right sock, wear left shoe where right shoe, there the final plan may not necessarily have a linear order essentially. It will, it will have a parallel order that you first wear the two socks and then you wear the two shoes and then you are done essentially and then you could do between them in any order essentially. So, any, any 
linearization of a partial order or any topological sort of a partial order should be a valid plan. That is the original condition we started with, but instead of having to check all linearizations, we have changed this to this condition that it should have no flaws and the flaws are defined as there must be no open goals, which means every open goal or every goal or every sub goal must have a supporting causal link, causal link and there must be no threats that no action must be threatening to disrupt a causal link. And as long as that condition is satisfied, the plan that we produce is a going to be a valid plan. In this case, it turns out to be a linear plan, which is also the optimal plan. So, of course, you would possibly observe that there is a little bit of a slight of a hand here that I have somehow chosen the right actions and the right uh, things to be put. So, somehow I have chosen the right things for this choose a flaw and choose an action. So, notice that these were symmetric situations. We wanted to pick up B and we wanted to pick up A and I, I chose pick up A which led us to the plan. If I had chosen pick up B, then you can see that there is no way you could have produced the optimal plan at least. You would have produced a longer plan. Because if you are going to do pick up B as a action which is after this, then you will have to put it down again and then pick up C, put it down and then pick up A. So, all those extra actions would have kept in. Okay, so, this is a basic idea of plan space planning. This is the algorithm. There are variations to this algorithm which people have developed essentially. So, some people only maintain an agenda of uh, to be solved and they keep resolving threats along the way, agenda of open goals to be solved. This is a more generic algorithm and you can of course, write variations to this. You can put in some heuristics and so on. Basically. So, I would just like to end with a word about something which I mentioned on the way, which is this notion of. So, if you if you if you if you have observed what was happening here, we started set resolving open goals from the end essentially, because that is where the open goals were and this produced more open goals and we had this flavor of backward reasoning happening essentially. And that is because we are working at the ground level, we are only considering actions which are applicable in the domain. But if you had high level actions like you know go from here to Delhi. Now, that is not an action which is a ground level action. The ground level action would have many other steps that you go from here to the station, you board a train and all this kind of stuff. If you have this notion of hierarchical actions, which means actions which can be decomposed into smaller actions, then we can talk about a high level plan and then refining it into a low level plan. And then this strategy that we had spoken about earlier means ends analysis if you remember simon and newell the means sense analysis strategy for problem solving was one of the first strategies proposed by in in this ai literature in the 60s in the last century it was based on the way they thought human beings solve problem and the basic idea behind mean sense analysis is that just like we have flaws and we have resolvers of flaws, a more general thing is that you have differences and you have resolvers for differences. Okay. So, what do you mean by differences? So, in this travel domain, I would say there are many differences in my plan to go from here to Dehradun. One is that the, the highest difference is that I am here and I am not in Dehradun. So, in that sense, it is like a flaw. But then, when I decompose it into lower level actions, the and then I decide that you know I need these steps, I need to go from here to the station, or let us say even lower level that I need to go from here to the gate and then gate to the station and then get into a train and then go to Delhi. And so, if I realize that and if I can recognize that these are the differences that I need to resolve. So, difference for one difference is that I am in Chennai, I am not in Dehradun. And so, the largest difference, I may have a difference operator table, which would say if distance is more than 500 kilometers, you must take a train 
or a flight, if distance is less than between 100 and 500, you can take a bus or something like that. You may have an operator reference table like that. And then the key thing about mean sense analysis is that if you have differences and if you have operators, you must choose the largest differences first. The largest difference would be that I am in Chennai, I am not in Delhi. And once I say that, okay, I have to resolve that difference first, I would first select an action or a plan for doing that. And that let us say that action is to take a train from Chennai Central to Delhi. And then I have smaller differences left. I am here, not in the station, that is one difference. Then I am in Delhi station, but I am not in, let us say I am taking a bus to Dehradun, I am not at the bus station and, and things like that essentially. So, you address the higher differences first and the lower differences later. So, differences are the ends and operators are the means to achieve those ends essentially. And means and analysis says that you must an analyze the domain and look at the larger, impo more important things first, address them and then look at the less important things essentially. So, one interesting example of this is this towers of Hano Hanoi which you must be familiar with. So, if you want to let us say move 5 disks from location A to location C, then there are 5 differences. You know that smallest disk is at A, not at C. Second smallest disk is at A, not in C. So, we have five, 5 differences. And if we can now order these differences to say that the larger the disk, the more the difference, then that your mean sense analysis strategy says that first worry about moving the, the biggest disk to the destination, then worry about moving the other disk essentially. And then of course, you know the familiar recursive algorithm will come automatically out of this that you move those n minus disk to B, then move this largest disk to C and so on essentially. So, all those can be seen as specific cases of mean sense analysis and that was proposed quite a long time ago by Simon and Newell in, his, in their book called Human Problem Solving. So, all these algorithms that we are have seen for planning so far, these are in some sense ancient. They were all developed in the last century sometime. Uh, it turns out that whatever, however hard you try, however hard you try to write these algorithms, the problem is hard. Remember we said that even the slips domain, the simplest planning domain is P space complete essentially. So, it turns out that even in simple domains, the only kind of plans you can find were of length something like 5 to 10 essentially. So, if you had a problem in which the solution was 5 steps long or 10 steps long, then you could use these algorithms for solving them essentially. Then in 1995, a pair of researchers came up with a new idea and with an algorithm which looked at this whole thing in very different way, an algorithm called graph plan. And there were other variations which came along around that time, which increased the length of the plans that could be found by an order of magnitude essentially. Which means if you could find plans of length 10 with these algorithms, goal stack planning or any of these algorithms, you could find plans of length of hundreds using these new algorithms essentially. Of course, we would not have time to study those algorithms in detail in this course. But in the next class, I will just give you a glimpse of this algorithm graph plan, which is kind of a landmark algorithm in the world of planning essentially. And we will end with planning in this course with that essentially. So, I will stop here. Essentially. This says A2 should happen before A. This shows that. A 1 should happen before A. After A. Promotion, you are promoting, okay. So, A should happen before A 1, that is right. Holding is not part of plan space. Sorry? Holding is not part of plan space, so we will directly go from pick up A to stack A B. Here. Going to uh, pick up a 
Yeah, after stacking B on C, we are picking up B. You, then we are, this holding A is not an action, it is it's a predicate. That is why I have drawn a circle around it. That is not an action. After that, after picking up A, you are going to stack A onto B, and that is the last step in the plan. Okay, so we will stop here.